This is the first video of our discussion on the topic of thermal physics. In this video, we will talk about temperature and thermal expansion. We will look at the units and scales that can be used to quantify temperature. Then we will look at the zeroth law of thermodynamics and the concepts behind that law. We will also discuss thermal expansion, both the linear thermal expansion and the volume thermal expansion. And finally, we will solve a few problems based on these concepts. It's important to note that temperature is a scalar. The temperature of a body can be defined loosely as a measure of hotness or coldness of that body. Now, of course, there is a more accurate quantitative definition of temperature which we will discuss in one of our next videos. There are three scales or units that we can use to quantify temperature. The first one is the scale of Fahrenheit in which the temperature can be defined as degree Fahrenheit. The second one is the scale of Celsius where the temperature is defined as degree Celsius. And the third one is the scale of Kelvin, with an abbreviation K. Note, there is no degree Kelvin, just capital K. Now let's look at a few conversions. Let's say you want to convert a temperature from the degree of Celsius to the degree of Fahrenheit. The conversion is given by the following equation. The temperature in Fahrenheit equals 9 fifth the temperature in Celsius plus 32 degrees. So this equation enables you to go back and forth between the Fahrenheit scale and the Celsius scale. The second conversion is between the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale. And it's given by the temperature in Kelvin equals the temperature in Celsius plus 273.15 degrees. So this equation enables you to go back and forth between the scale of Kelvin and the scale of Celsius. Another important point that we can conclude from these conversions is that if you look at this equation, it tells you the size of one Kelvin is the same as the size of one Celsius. That is to say, the interval of one Kelvin is the same as the interval of one Celsius. Likewise, from this equation, we conclude the interval of one Fahrenheit is the same as 9 over 5, the interval of 1 Celsius. Now let's look at some important points on these three scales. Let's take the boiling point of water. In Celsius, it is 100 degrees Celsius. Now by substituting this 100 in here, we can figure out the boiling point of water in the scale of Fahrenheit and that turns out to be 212 degree Fahrenheit. Likewise, substituting this 100 degrees in this equation tells you that the boiling point of water in Kelvin scale is 373.15 Kelvin. Now let's look at the freezing point of water. In a scale of Celsius, it is 0 degree Celsius. Now substituting this number in here gives you 32 degrees Fahrenheit for the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit scale. And substituting 0 degrees Celsius in this equation gives you a value of 273.15 Kelvin for the freezing point of water in Kelvin scale. Before we explain the zeroth law of thermodynamics, let's look at the concepts behind thermal equilibrium. Assume you have two objects. Object B and object A. The initial temperature of object B is, let's say, 20 degrees Celsius, and the initial temperature of object A is, let's say, 10 degrees Celsius. 
Now you bring them together so that they touch each other, as shown in this diagram. What will happen? The temperature of object B will go down and the temperature of object A will go up. This process will go on until the temperatures of B and A settle at somewhere in between 20 degrees and 10 degrees. For the sake of argument, let's take that temperature to be 15 degrees Celsius. When the temperatures of these two bodies are both at the same common temperature of let's say 15 degrees Celsius, we say that these two bodies A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So now we have object B and A in thermal equilibrium with each other, say at some temperature T. Now assume that I have a third object, object C, that is in thermal equilibrium with object B at the same temperature T. What we can conclude from this is that object C and object A are also in thermal equilibrium with each other at the same temperature T. And this is known as the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Next, let's look at linear thermal expansion. Say you have an object initially with length L and you increase the temperature of the object by delta T. Now that will result in increase in the length of the object by the amount delta L. If delta T is not too large, then the change in length is proportional to the change in temperature. Now, if we were to change this proportionality to an equation, it will look like this. The change in length equals a constant alpha Note, this sign here is proportionality sign, and this sign here is alpha, times the original length of the object prior to the change in temperature, times the change in temperature. So this is the equation that gives you the change in length of an object when the temperature of the object changes by that amount. The constant alpha here is a property of the material that makes up the object, and it's known as the coefficient of linear expansion. Note that the unit for alpha is 1 over Kelvin or 1 over degree Celsius. So that is the SI unit for alpha. For example, if you have aluminum, the value for aluminum is about 2.4 times 10 to the power minus 5 per Kelvin or per Celsius just to give you an idea so different materials will have different value for the coefficient of linear expansion the following diagram describes thermal expansion at temperature Ti the length of this object is L naught now let's assume the temperature of the object is increased to Tf the length will increase to L sub F. The length of this object has changed by an amount of LF minus L naught, and the temperature of the object has changed by an amount of TF minus TI. And we can write the change in length equals the linear coefficient of expansion of this object, alpha, times the initial uh, length of the object, L naught, times the change in temperature of the object. Now let's look at a volume thermal expansion. Let's say you have a cube that is made up of the same material as the object that we looked at earlier. The initial volume of this cube is V0, and it is at temperature, let's say, Ti. Next, if the temperature of this object increases, let's say, to the final temperature of T sub F, so T sub F is greater than the initial temperature of T sub I, the volume of this object will also increase to, let's say, V sub F. Now, the change in volume is obviously the final volume minus the initial volume, and the change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So we can relate these two changes in a following manner. The change in volume equals 
a constant, let's call that constant beta, times the initial volume, V0, times the change in the temperature of the object. The constant beta has a term. It is known as the coefficient of a volume expansion. So let's say you have a material. Let's call this material steel. So you have a steel bar and a steel cube. So this equation describes the linear thermal expansion of steel, and this equation describes the volume thermal expansion of that steel cube. Now we can relate the coefficient of linear expansion of steel to the coefficient of volume expansion of steel, and they are related in the following manner. The coefficient of volume expansion of a material is three times the coefficient of linear expansion of the same material. An important result to remember. Problem 1. At what temperature is the Fahrenheit scale reading equal to twice that of the Celsius scale? And at what temperature do they coincide? When the Fahrenheit scale is twice that of the Celsius scale, that means C is F over 2. Recalling the conversion between these two scales, which is Tf equals 9 over 5, Tc plus 32. So when C is F over 2, that means the particular temperature when that happens is 9 over 5, C becomes F over 2 plus 32. And when you solve for the F, you get 300 and 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So at that temperature, the Fahrenheit scale reading equal to twice that of the Celsius scale. Next, at what temperature do they coincide? So all you have to do is to equate the two temperatures the same. So F equals 9 over 5, F plus 32. And you can solve for F, and you will see it happens at minus 40 degrees. And that solves the problem. Problem 2. A steel bridge is built in the summer when the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. At the same time of the construction, the length is 85 meters. What is the length of the bridge on a cold winter day when the temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius? The coefficient of linear expansion of steel is given as such. So this is a linear thermal expansion problem. So the change in the linear length equals the coefficient of linear expansion times the original length times the change in temperature. Now this involves contraction because now the temperature is going the other way. It's actually decreasing. So the change in length equals alpha. Alpha is 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 5. The original length is 85 meters. And the change in temperature is minus 10, which is the final temperature, minus the initial temperature, which is 30. And you can solve for the change in length, which will be minus 0 0.0408 meter. So the length of the bridge during the cold winter day must be the length of the bridge during the summer day, subtract the change in length, which we have just calculated above. And that's going to be 84.96 meters. And that solves the problem. Problem 3. A wire that is 3 meters in length at 20 degrees Celsius is found to increase in length by 1.8 cm. When heated to 500 degrees Celsius, find the wire's coefficient of linear expansion for this temperature range. Change in length is 1.8 cm. Let's turn that into meter. Alpha we don't know. The original length is 3 meters. And the change in temperature is 500 minus 20, so that is 480. And we can solve for alpha, which will give you 1.25 times 10 to the power minus 5 per Kelvin for alpha. And that solves the problem. Thanks for watching.